Hi, welcome to your astrology forecast for April 4th, 2014 to April 6th, 2014. And we've got on April 4th, Venus and Aquarius sextiling the south node in Aries and trining the north node in Libra. Hey, guess what? This means awesome stuff for relationships and for your sense of self, your sense of who you are and stuff. So Venus and Aquarius could bring along, you know, group activities that would be fun and freeing at the same time. Nice thing also is that uh, Aquarius is very objective. We can look at all sides of the picture. We can look at, you know, both sides. We can look at my side. We can look at your side. We can understand each other's points of view. We can understand, you know, and not only can we understand, but we can have our own sense of freedom to express ourselves more fully and be, everybody will be cool about it, you know? Everybody will be harmonious about it and everybody will understand. All right, and then the moon in Gemini, sextiles Uranus and Aries. Hey, what? Okay, so Uranus and Aries is going to bring some insights and they're going to be out of control and stuff. They're going to be like bright and stuff. No, I'm just kidding. But no, they're going to be shocking. And they're going to be like, oh, Moon and Gemini, whoa, what's happening? Okay, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm out of control right now. Okay, Moon and Gemini. It knows how to communicate very well. It knows how to communicate its feelings. I'm giving it a sense of humanity because it helps me express what is going on. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I, I. Okay, so not only... That, but you're going to have insights into your feelings. You're going to have insights into your pro uh, thought processes. And you're going to be able to communicate those things to others easier. You'll be able to express yourself a little easier, especially your own sense of individuality and um, any any insights you have. And it'll just be like, you know, lightning bolts flying, people understanding, people having insights, like just like flashes, like. All right, anyway, <laughs> Moon and Gemini, sextiles the Sun and Aries. And this is, like, also that kind of stuff, dude. I mean, you'll be able to express yourself easier, express your emotions easier, communicate easier, uh, have conversations with people around you, right? with your neighbors, with your siblings, being on the phone, going around on short trips, talking to people around that you see, and be able to be who you are a little easier, be more bright and shiny and happy. Shiny, happy people. Won't go much further than that. All right. <laughs> Gemini. Squares, Chiron, and Pisces. Okay. Now, this is a bit, a little bit, you know, it's a little heavier. It's a little, like, oh, I have feelings and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chiron and Pisces is bringing up those wounds that hurt and stuff. And then we're going to, like, express them easier, though. That's a thing. But it all like be hard it'll bring up tensions in actually it could bring up tensions within sibling relationships or relationships with your neighbors <sighs> just take a deep breath it's okay all right <laughs> moon and gemini trans mars and libra we can really you know be true to ourselves while simultaneously being in relationship with others you know you know, expressing ourselves more fully within the relationship, being more uh, assertive about what we need and being able to communicate that easier. And, you know, the only thing is you don't want to come across as a little too blunt or, like, impatient. So you want to, you know, be nice about it. But Libra tends to make things a little more diplomatic. Make sure you're not also being uh, passive aggressive about things. You want to come right out and say what you mean and what you're feeling. So that's that's important. And it's actually good to exercise on these types of aspects because it'll help you to really release extra energy that you will have and it will be mental energy. So you want to be able to kind of clear away your thoughts a little bit. Uh, meditate would be good too. 
but also maybe like a moving meditation, walking or even uh, qigong or yoga or dancing, something that's, you know, going to help you release energies, get more in your body and out of your head. All right. On April 5th, <laughs> moon and Gemini squares Mercury and Pisces. Now, moon and Gemini and Mercury and Pisces. Okay, so we got some Mercury stuff going on there. But the thing is, Mercury and Pisces is a bit more convoluted in its communication. Moon and Gemini is trying to express its feelings. They're squaring, going to create some tensions. So maybe our thoughts and our emotions aren't really quite in line. They're not really uh, being communicated as easily as we would like them to be. So... Maybe just write down your feelings. Write down your dreams because your dreams may be influencing your emotions. So, and in influencing how you communicate. I don't know exactly there about that. But maybe it's the feelings around you that are help or not helping you communicate very easily because, you know, you're going to be a lot more sensitive to other people's feelings. So, everything you're saying isn't really your own feelings and all kinds of confusion there. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess do do the best you can with what you got. <laughs> All right. Moon in Gemini, sextiles the south node in Aries and trines the north node in Libra. Now, Moon in Gemini with the south node in Aries is like having us able to express ourselves easier, but also uh, we do want to watch out for saying too much or being too self-centered about our communications or Maybe uh, being impatient in a conversation, you want to try to listen as well as communicate. And with the North Node in Libra, it's, this is a lot of mental energy again, but you're going to be able to communicate easier in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And also uh, maybe even, you know, just communicate in relationships easier or with sibling or with neighbors, but you might be able to Express maybe where you want to go with things, where you want to head with uh, relationships or moving forward, kind of be able to express that a little easier. Then the moon in Gemini trans Venus and Aquarius. Now, this is great for relationships because you got uh, your emotions in line with your sense of romance, but you also have a lot of uh, intellectual energy going on, and you may. Uh, want to do something to uh, kind of feed that a little bit. Maybe go out and about and learn new things, uh, read new things, ex you know, talk about new things, and uh, share new insights with each other in a relationship. And if you're not in a relationship, then it's awesome energy for being out in a group setting and learning new things within that setting. And then the moon moves into Cancer. Now, this is going to make us want to go into our shells a little more, want to go home and just kind of chill out, uh, maybe go into our feelings and, you know, have more of a, you know, time for yourself within your home, nurture yourself, maybe uh -huh. make some delicious comfort food, read a book, take a bath, uh, just maybe even uh, call up some family that you haven't talked to in a long time, reconnect with family, uh, connect with your inner family that you have, uh, connect with the people in your home, that kind of thing, and express your feelings to someone close to you. Nurture your feelings, take care of yourself. Nurture someone else even, that's another possibility. Nurture someone close to you. And then Venus moves into Pisces. So Venus going to Pisces is going to bring a lot more sense of surrealism and fantasy to relationships. And you may idealize someone in a romantic potential if you're uh, single or someone you're already with. Uh, you may see them with rose-colored glasses a little more. You'll also be able to connect intuitively easier with other people and be able to share uh, you know, romantic feelings easier and It'll be a lot more uh, intuitive and you'll be more sensitive to feelings and uh, be able to really maybe express your love 
without even saying a word and just enjoy that, you know, that fantastic romance, that wonderful, uh, gentle, sensitive, um, ethereal romance that Pisces brings. And uh, writing music is awesome. Writing poetry is awesome. This stuff is really great for Venus and Pisces. All right. And then on April 6th, the moon in Cancer trines Neptune in Pisces. Okay, so your feelings are going to be it's important to nurture yourself during this moon in Cancer. With it trining Neptune in Pisces, you're going to be feeling energies from outside of you, other people's energies, but you may be able to help nurture someone easier and be more compassionate for someone. Be a better listener. You'll be able to be a better listener on this day and be able to um, really be that nurturing force that uh, you'll be able to like just hold a space for people easier or uh, you know other people will be maybe more compassionate towards you even um, but it's yeah it's important to take care of yourself and to uh, meditate on this day uh, because feelings will be cropping up but it'll be you know, it's it's kind of a gentler sort of thing, a gentler approach. But there are is a chance that, you know, people will be putting out their rough exteriors because cancer can kind of be like, you know, the protector of itself and put on like a, you know, protective shell. So it's it's just great for going within and not trying to be too outer directed. If you become too outer directed, you may not be completely, uh, you know, being yourself. Exactly. <laughs> and it's probably just because all those, you know, feelings in the air, you know, stuff. All right. And then the moon conjuncts Jupiter and Cancer. So we can really expand our horizons by going within. Kind of sounds, you know, contradictory. But, uh, you know, enjoying a book would be a great way to expand by going within, uh, just going within yourself, you can learn new things. Uh, and the richest insights really do come with, from within. And I guess I'll just leave it at that for now. <laughs> and then moon and cancer squares Uranus and Aries. Oh, but let's actually go talk about how we can actually learn more about family dynamics, uh, really expand beyond certain family traditions or try to uh, learn new things about other cultures, family traditions can help bring more insight into your own traditions in your family. All right, Moon and Cancer squares Uranus and Aries. So Moon and Cancer, we want to be in our comfort zones. We want to be all, you know, nice and cozy and, you know, nurtured and you know, loved. Well, Uranus and Aries is kind of like, jump out of your comfort zone, go forth, uh, go forth and, you know, discover new things and just shake up the world, you know, be a, you know, a pioneering force that brings change. So they're kind of like at odds because <laughs> Uranus and Aries is kind of like, get out of your comfort zone. That's basically what's going on there. And, you know, we may be able to move beyond our comfort zones on that day. Then the moon in Cancer opposes Pluto and Capricorn. So this is bringing up maybe what is unconscious in, in terms of what our comfort zones are. Or maybe, yeah, bringing up the limitations that we put upon ourselves sometimes uh, by being in our comfort zones. And it really wants us to bring to light new ways of uh, doing things and getting involved outside of your comfort zone and into the outer world more and uh, really grow into your who you're to become to really be a force in the world, to really be 
you know, in your career, in a certain place in society, to find your really your place in society. Moon and Cancer is going to make you kind of want to, you know, get back in your comfort zone. But Pluto is trying to like, come on, draw you out of that, draw you out of the depths of yourself and be more in the light. Try to ex like kind of, yeah, transform into who you are, emerge from the depths and be who you are. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then the moon and Cancer trines Chiron and Pisces. Oh, that darn Chiron. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to try to make a better relationship with Chiron. But Chiron in Pisces is the wounded healer, as we may know. You know, it's kind of the typical, yeah, that's what it's called, right? All right. <laughs> Chiron in Pisces is really having us take those wounds that we have, you know, dealt with in our lives. We've all gone through something, you know, some kind of pain. And we have to use that pain to help to bring more awareness to it and also bring it into the light to where it can help other people and use that pain as fuel to be a force in the world of healing. Moon and Cancer is bringing this into ourselves, into our emotions, into our deeper uh, sense of emotions. And we really are going to have to, you know, sit there with our emotions, sit there with those wounds, and uh, be there for ourselves, nurture ourselves. And in nurturing yourself, you can bring healing to the world. All right, quite a weekend. I hope you guys have a good weekend. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And <laughs> if you did, uh, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I will be back with your weekday video. Alrighty. Thanks again.